It's Saturday night, November 5th, and this is the first installment of my November 2016 Countdown to Retirement video. If you are new to these videos, um, what I basically do is make it one video every month um, detailing what I, what books I purchased that month, what books I've read, what movies I watched, and tonight I'm even going to uh, show up movies I bought today. We go to, my family, we go to a lot of uh, used bookstores on weekends, Saturdays, generally, and um, I keep buying books. I'm, I read a lot, but I can never catch up to all that I've purchased. Um, and it's getting to be that way with movies, too. Well, that's not so bad yet. Um, and I don't intend to let that get out of hand. I hope. <laughs> um, I'm talking kind of low because everybody's sleeping. So, but I think you can hear me pretty good. So, uh, today we went to a few used bookstores in New Jersey, uh, five of them to be exact, and I bought books in three of them. And uh, then we went to Best Buy, and I bought some movies, and I'm going to show now what I, uh, what I got today. So, first, The Gates of the Alamo. This was two dollars. It's like brand new condition. I put the uh, clear sleeve on it. Um, I like to do that to my hardcover books and take care of them. And what's really nice is that, uh, well, it's like in brand new condition, but also inside. And again, this was two dollars. It's uh, signed by the author. Not a big deal, but there it was. Um, great condition. Someone had it signed and got rid of it. I don't know that it's been read doesn't really matter it's, it's just like uh, like brand new okay next this book came out in the early 1990s 92 or 93 uh, once they move like the wind about the Apache Indians written by David Roberts hardcover again excellent condition two dollars the sacred pipe black elk Black Elk's account of the seven rites of the Oglala Sioux. And this, um, how much was this? This might have been like six or seven dollars. It's like brand new though, and it's a good price. And next, Through Dakota Eyes, subtitled Narrative Accounts of the Minnesota Indian War of 1862. So these are first-hand accounts of the Minnesota Indian War of 1862, as I just said, and uh, looks pretty interesting. Um, I like reading the first-hand accounts. It's footnoted and edited, so it looks interesting. This, this is pretty cool. Um, Scott's Bluff, Nebraska. This is a national park uh, History handbook, historical park handbook from uh, 1958. It's uh, excellent condition. Pretty cool item to find. Two dollars. It wasn't. It wasn't prominent on the shelf. I just saw this like booklet on the side, you know, between other books, and I always pull out the booklets because you never know what you're gonna find. So, I saw Scott's Bluff. I'm like, that's cool. I gotta have that. This book here, this is Volume 8, 1890-1901, Volume 8 in a series of, I think, 12 books, The Life History of the United States, Life Being, Time Life Books. So, I have one, I have uh, Volumes 1 to 7, and this is Volume 8. I'm not really looking for the other volumes, they, they um, cover years from uh, 1901 and later which doesn't really interest me too much. Not that I wouldn't buy them if they were like 50 cents or something in nice condition, but I'm not really looking for them. And uh, a lot of people might recognize the Time Life series of books from the early 1990s. This one is the Spanish West. I have uh, maybe 15 or so or more, maybe close to 20 books from this series. I'm not sure how many were in it. It's like brand new. This was, uh, I think, a couple of dollars. Yeah, a couple of dollars, and it was brand new. 
Then I picked up this book here. The Spirit of Native America, Beauty and Mysticism in American Indian Art by Anna Lee Walters. And basically this is a lot of uh, material, let's see if you can get it, material culture of the Native Americans. Um, the beautiful clothing and there's weapons in here, moccasins, and it's in great, excellent condition. Okay, let me just organize myself here for a second. And we're back from our commercial break. Um, so I picked up a few paperbacks also. And these are um, some from the Star Trek series, Star Trek V. These are adapted from the television show. I have um, a few of these already, but the ones I bought today are ones I didn't have. I have most of the set now. So that was uh, five, six. Now seven they had, but the cover was bent, and I feel kind of bad I didn't buy it now. Um, cheap enough, I should have just gotten it. Um, it was a, kind of a bend in one of the corners. I'll, I'll find it again. And you have Star Trek eight. nine and ten and again these are um, like short stories adapted from the television series then I picked up uh, staying on the topic of kind of like sci-fi um, CJ Cherry Port Eternity looks in, like an interesting book I like the cover and this I didn't really need. I didn't buy it to read. Um, Last of the Mohicans. I just let me get a better hold on that. Um, I just thought it had a really cool cover, so it was like fifty cents, and I figured for that price, I could put it out as like you know art. It's a nice thing. I like it. Get rid of the glare there. So Last of the Mohicans. And last on the paperbacks, um, this book is called Comes the Hunter, by George W. Proctor. And it takes place, it looks like, in the American Southwest. And it's a white man looking, I guess, to seek revenge for his family that was killed by Indians. And I'm just flipping through the pages, look kind of interesting. Um, I saw a lot of, you know, references to Kiowas and Comanches, and I like that stuff. So I figured, well, I'll get it. No, that wasn't that expensive. Um, so, and it was in, it was in great shape. Okay, then I picked up a few movies today. Um, past videos I didn't show movies I've been purchasing, which is too bad, because I've, I've gotten probably 100, 150 movies in the last few months. Um, mostly a lot of older movies, um, like Bogart and uh, Rando and Newman. Um, a lot of film noir movies. So, um... Today I picked up, and it's funny that I saw this because I was just thinking about it the other day, and it was like $9, sealed, brand new, Logan's Run. Um, and this had, it doesn't say it on the box. If it does, I, I haven't seen it yet, but there's two versions of the film on here, like a letterbox version and then the other, uh, um, what's, what's it called? Uh, I don't know, but more boxed smaller version of it um, and then there's the letterbox which is like a widescreen so there's like the widescreen and the standard uh, standard view so and then there's a commentary by Michael York so I think yeah, it sounds good I haven't seen the movie in a long time but I used to like that movie when I was a kid then I picked a I've wanted to watch Gladiator um, the movie Gladiator with Russell Crowe uh, I've seen it sort of in the movies when it first came out and kind of wanted to see it again. And I never see it and when I go to like Best Buy, I never see it. And I feel like buying it online. It's just something if I in the store and it's there, the price is right, I get it. So um, they had this at Best Buy, the double feature, and it was uh, Gladiator and Troy. I've never seen Troy. I'm not uh, expecting much. Um, you know, I'll watch it. But really, uh, Gladiator was what I bought it for. And if Troy is good, or you know, if I like it, all the better. It was only five dollars, two movies. And I picked up uh, Gettysburg. Haven't seen this in a long time. 
Tom Berenger, Jeff Daniels, Martin Sheen. I remember this being a pretty good movie, so. Like that. And last but not least, uh, James Coburn, Our Man Flint. Look, looked interesting, like 60s psychedelic, uh, secret agent kind of movie. So it's supposed to be funny. I'll try it. So that's it for the first installment uh, of Countdown to Retirement. This is this will be my tenth video since I started. Um, is it the this will be my tenth November? December will be eleven. January will be twelve. Right. So then February will be one. Will be my thirteenth and mark one year uh, finished. Actually, um, January would mark the end of January would mark one year finished. Um, so time's going right by, but uh, I don't want to go too fast. I mean, sure, I want to retire, but I don't want my life to just fly by, right? So anyway, um, till next time. And uh, next week we're going out again. Then it's thanks. Then it's uh, not going out the weekend after. Then we're going out Thanksgiving weekend. So I have a few more installments for this month, and uh, look forward to finding some nice items. Talk to you later. Bye bye. A little quick addendum. I forgot two movies that I purchased today. I forgot to show them. So um, these are movies that I have, but these are like special editions called Steelbook editions. I don't. They come with a, a Blu-ray and a DVD. I don't have a Blu-ray player, but if I ever do, um, now I have two Blu-rays to play. So um, the two movies are uh, The Big Lebowski and Young Frankenstein. And these were seven ninety nine each at Best Buy, which is a pretty good price. And, and there's bonus features. I have both of these movies, like I said, and I may have all the bonus features. I'm I'm not sure offhand. I haven't had a chance to to look. But I think you know they're kind of cool anyway. And uh, haven't even opened them yet. Um, so I picked those up. If there's something new in them, I don't have great. If not, they're still cool items. And I got the Blu-rays if I ever get a Blu-ray player. So that's it for this time. So long again. It's Saturday night, November 12th. And this is the next update in my Countdown to Retirement videos. November's almost half over. A few more days will be halfway through the month. Hard to believe. I'm counting down to June 2019. And, uh... It's fine. You know, every month, every month I have a video, what books I purchased, what movies I watched, what books I read. So, today we went to a few bookstores, my family, and uh, picked up some books. I'm going to show what they are right now. First is called Shadows of the Indian, and it's subtitled Stereotypes in American Culture by Raymond William Stedman. And this book basically is about uh, Native Americans being stereotyped, I guess, in books and movies and in, in popular culture. And it uh, looks pretty interesting. It's from the early 1980s, Oklahoma Press, 1982. So, and it's in, it's in decent shape. So that was one. And I picked up, this was pretty cool. I've never seen this before. It's called... Pictures from an Expedition, Early Views of the American West. And what it seems to be is like uh, some short essays in here with, with art um, that displays work by... Let's see, what can I get that in here? Um, sorry, here we go. There's George Catlin. And uh, let's see. Alfred Jacob Miller. There's some Carl Bodmer in here, and I guess it's just um, art from early uh, artists going west, pa painting the Indians, and here's Carl Bodmer was painting right on the cover. So it's kind of a thin book. Oh, and one cool thing is that one of the, it's there's some um, authors in here, a few of them. This is a catalog that is accompanying an expedition, expedition, an exhibition. <laughs> what am I thinking? I'm thinking of. Uh, I'm one of these uh, artists going on an expedition. So anyway, um, this this book is a, a catalog that accompanied an exhibition 
1978 and 1979, and there were some several authors in here. Martha Sandweiss is one of them, but another one is Howard R. Lamar. And inside of this book, it says Howard R. Lamar personal copy, which I didn't realize till I got home. Actually, I missed it. Um, it was three dollars. There's some nice pictures. So there's three dollars, and it's uh, got a signature by one of the authors, and it's his personal copy. Which, speaking of which, uh, very odd. I saw a book today by Jeffrey Ward, um, The West. He did a, that um, based on the Ken Burns series, and Jeffrey Ward, spelled G E O F F R E Y, um, had given a book to his parents that he signed, and he wrote like you know to mom and dad or something like that. And I didn't buy it, but I opened up the book today in this bookstore, and it, it was to mom and dad, something to that effect, and you know signed Jeffrey. So the book that he signed to his parents was in this bookstore. I didn't. I, I already have the book. I didn't need it. It wasn't like it. It was in pretty good shape, but I could do better if I want to get another copy. And uh, but it was just kind of unique and funny that uh, there he had the book signed to his parents, and there it was in a used bookstore. How did that happen? Like you would think that they would have it unless they passed away and all their stuff was given, you know, sold to stores. Maybe they're from Connecticut. Who knows? Um, I can look that up. I'll look up if Jeffrey Ward is from Connecticut, if, if there's any information on that on the internet. But that was kind of curious, so that a book to his parents was in a used bookstore. Then I picked up uh, Frontier America, the Far West. And this has some essays in here and art. Um, I'll show you. Kind of like some brief essays or articles. I guess essays is a better word. Um, the reason why I got it was there's uh, some, let me see if I can find it in here. I kept finding it before so easily. Now that I'm looking for it, I don't, I don't see it. Just give me one second here. There was some like, uh, oh, I don't want to tell you yet. I want you to, okay, here. <clears throat> like uh, pictographs of Custer's Last Stand. Or bu Buffalo Hide paintings, I guess. Um, here's another picture on this side, ledger art type of stuff. So there's a few pictures like that in here, and I thought that was pretty cool. This is by uh, an artist named White Bird, Custer's Last Fight, painted on muslin. Actually, that wasn't buff on a buffalo rub, it was on muslin. And, uh, there's a few pictures like that in here. So I figured, hey, I like that stuff, I'll get it. Then this was a very good find, this next book here. Let me put this down. Sun Dogs and Eagle Down, The Paintings of Bill Holm. This was, I think, uh, $4. It's hard cover. It was in great shape. It was just a little, like, uh, ding to the dust jacket up here. You really can't even see it. But, uh, you know, it's in the, the clear broad art jacket now. And I had actually had seen this book. I don't remember how many years ago, maybe when it first came out. Um, I didn't get it. Well, I had seen it online. Um, I didn't get it because you can see on the cover, kind of like Northwest Coast Indians. That's not really my thing. And I didn't know what was in the book. I had never seen and was able to see inside the book. And so when I saw the book today, picked it up and was surprised to find stuff like this inside of it, which is uh, clearly like, you know, Plains Indians, or at least um, of that culture. These are probably Nez Perce Indians. I'm sorry if there's some glare. There you go. Um, so there's a few, actually quite a few. Here is a Blackfoot. Let me see, is that what it says here? I don't want to give wrong information. Um, I'm not in camera. Hold on. Um, does it say here Blackfoot? Well, I think it is. I don't see that it says it here. But I'll show you the picture because it's that kind of headdress. Um, so some really nice, could be Blackfoot, some really nice paintings in here um, with descriptive text. So for the price, I was like, wow, I'll, I'll get that. Sure. You don't have to pull my own. Okay, then I picked up some paperbacks. Now, uh, 
this book I already have, but it's very hard to find in such nice condition. Um, I did read this book a couple years ago, Wild Times, by Brian Garfield. And the book is just like in excellent condition. If it was read, it was read gently. And um, good find. It was half price. I think I paid it was, uh, like a dollar and a quarter. This book here, The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing. I'd like to read this in the coming year. Um, I'll get to that in, in a moment. Um, the coming year. So anyway, The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing by Marilyn Durham. This book I think I have already, um, but it was a real nice copy. It was only a dollar. Uh, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. This is like the screenplay by William Goldman. So it's basically you know, the dialogue and there's some photos in here from the movie. Then I got uh, Cheyenne Raiders by Robert Jordan. Originally when he wrote this book, he was uh, using a pen name Jackson O'Reilly. So, Cheyenne Raiders. This one here is called The Sundown Breed by Dan Parkinson. It's got Kiowa Indians in it in the Southwest. Then I picked up First Blood by Jack Schaefer. Paperback, old paperback. A Trail to Wounded Knee by Tim Champlin. I have a few books by him. I need to read some of them. So pick that up. And last but not least, Northwest Passage by Kenneth Roberts. It's a thick book. And it was like in excellent shape. I put it in the book bag, but it's in great shape. So a moment ago, or a minute ago, I was saying about this coming year, um, I don't know if I mentioned it in a previous video, but I'll say it again. So this coming year, I'm going to do a theme. Um, it's going to be the year of the Western. And I'm going to try to read as many of my Western novels as I can. Um, that or just try to make it my business to do like two a month, which would be, or at least, you know, maybe try to get 25 at least read during the year, which is a lot. Um, but then read other books, of course, also. Uh, maybe I could do more than 25. Uh, it would be great if I could do, you know, 35, 40 of them in a year. That would be really cool. So, the year of the Western, and, you know, I'm mixing some other books, some mystery, some science fiction, some history. But I want to try to read a lot of these Westerns that I've been getting and, and just kind of have a theme year. Try to do things that are fun. Next year, the year after that, I'm thinking of making it the year of the short story. That could change, but just going through all my books that have short stories, just trying to um, even skipping around it, which would be kind of cool instead of you know like having to read the whole book through, check off on a piece of paper what stories I read in that book so far, and you know skip around different books and just read short stories, focus on that for the year. Um, so we'll see. But uh, this coming year is the year of the Western. I've just been thinking about that a long time, so I'm going to go through with it. And uh, that'll be cool. So that's it for this update. And I'm sure there'll be another one or two updates before the end of the month. And then I'll splice them all together. And uh, is that the right word? Splice them all? Spices to cut up. I will uh, put them all together in my video program. None of this is professional stuff. As you could, this is my tablet videotaping me. Um, I don't have professional lighting. I've got no one writing my script. I think you could tell. And uh, just talking, BSing. And uh, at the end of the month, I'll go over what movies I watch. Watch Logan, watch Logan's Run uh, last night. That was really good. I'd seen that when I was a kid. And now my kid watched it, and he he liked it. And uh, so. I'll go over the movies at the end of the month. Until then, take care. Bye. Well, it's Saturday night, November 26th, and this will be my second to last update for the month of November 2016. It's uh, two days past Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving, uh, which 
would only be possible, I, I would think, if you didn't talk politics this particular year. Um, that aside, today we went to... Oh, also, I'm just getting over a throat infection, so um, I might pause a few times to have a little bit of water, which I should do anyway, um, after talking a lot, but especially today, because uh, a few days ago I couldn't even speak. My throat was really bad raspy, hoarse, and uh, couldn't even swallow without pain. But uh, thanks to the marvelous invention of penicillin, I'm feeling a lot better. Now back to uh, today. So today my family took a trip upstate New York uh, to two used bookstores, uh, both attached to libraries. Um, upstate being about two hours north of New York City, roughly. Uh, before I get to what I purchased at the bookstores, though, I wanted to show a few books that I did get on eBay over the last week or two. Um, I don't think I showed these in a previous update, so I'm going to show them now. Um, this book looks interesting. It's called The Last Warrior by Frederick Bean. I like the cover, and uh, I think I'm, I'm going to read this uh, upcoming year, The Year of the Western. Um, so The Last Warrior, Frederick Bean. These two I picked up from a seller in England, and I got them kind of cheap, even with shipping. Uh, Monty Walsh by Jack Schaefer and The Canyon by Jack Schaefer. They both have really cool covers. They're both in incredible shape. Pretty much like new. But my mouth's covered. Pretty much like new. And uh, shipping wasn't bad. They were packed nicely, so... Great, great shape. Happy to have these. So, nice nice find there. Nice purchase. And Johnny Christmas by Forrester Blake. I have um, two other copies of this book. One with a different cover. It's old and a little bit um, fragile. More, more so than this, which is still in great shape. And I have a more recent printing, a, a, a large soft cover printing from my university press. Um, so this look has good reviews, and I hope to read this this coming year also, the year of the Western. So, um, and that year of the Western is, is just my own personal thing. I don't know if anybody else is doing that or some kind of official reading um, frenzy, but for me, that's what I would like to do. So, I want to just take one moment to get some water, and I will continue. Hello again. So, um, actually, the first book I'm going to show here, I should have showed in just previously. Um, it slipped my mind. I'm reading this book right now, and I did buy it on the internet. Iron Eyes, My Life as a Hollywood Indian. And this is... Um, as told to Colin Perry. Now, many of you may recognize Iron Eyes Cody from the famous TV commercial about littering, and the tear comes down his cheek. Um, and many of you might know or might not know that he's not actually a Native American, Iron Eyes Cody. Uh, he's a Sicilian from Louisiana. Obviously, being Sicilian, his family comes from Sicily and Italy. So, um... He, he was a fake, but uh, he tells a lot of good stories in here. He, he, he makes up the first chapter, especially. I, I've only read like the first maybe four chapters. And he makes up um, a whole history for himself. He gives himself a Native American heritage. Um, and obviously that, that's all a lie. But the stories that he tells about being in movies with Gary Cooper and different people... Um, they're interesting, and hopefully they're truthful. Um, so it, it's a very quick read. Um, you don't get bogged down. You know, it's just fun to read. Um, so if it's great anecdotes if the stories are true. So I, I had seen this actually in a, at a used bookstore, and it was a little bit beat up. I didn't get it. Um, maybe now if I saw it, I'd just get it as a reading copy and save this, because this is a really nice copy of the book. Um, but I'm enjoying it. So that's, uh, that. Um, now, what I've purchased today, so I'm going to get to that now. 
So again, I went to, uh, did I say before, I went to two bookstores, used bookstores related, um, related to public libraries. <clears throat> Those are really cool because you can find a lot of good stuff. The stock moves. It's not just library books they're selling. They're selling books people donate. And you can really find some nice stuff. So <clears throat> today I picked up uh, the soft cover cop one flew over the cuckoo's nest. I think I paid 50 cents or a dollar for it. It's in great shape. I have some like, small paperbacks, but I saw it and I thought, you know what? It's cheap enough. It's in nice condition. So I had never seen this cover. This book I need to read. Okay, um, <clears throat> this one here, I, I wouldn't have purchased it. It's called The Brave Ones. It's um, edited by Marvin Allen Karp. And it's uh, war stories, I, I think uh, maybe World War II, even the Korean War. I wouldn't have purchased it. It's really not my kind of um, my kind of thing, usually. But there's a story in here um, about a Nat that has a Native American character in it. And so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, it's a short story, and so I figured, I think I paid 50 cents for this. So for that price, just, you know, if it has one or two good stories in it, all the better. But that's probably the only story that I'll read. Um, I, I, I went online and found a, a breakdown of the different stories, and basically they didn't really appeal to me except for that one story with the Native American in it. But again, for that price, it's worth... Just, just to read that little story. Okay, um, this was like brand new. It was fifty cents. It, it was. I don't think it's been read. I'm sitting there on the shelf, just waiting for me. I have another copy of this, but for fifty cents, I just had to get it. Um, I'll see which one is in better shape, which will probably be this one because it's like again brand new, um, and read the other one, I guess. So this is uh, the Red Heart, by James Alexander Tom, who is a well-known historical fiction writer. Next, now this book I certainly didn't need, but the 50 cents, how could I say no? Uh, the Big Sky, I really like this cover uh, by A.B. Guthrie. Oh, some glare there, but uh, you can see it. <clears throat> so it was in really great shape, it was just sitting there, said I gotta get it, 50 cents. This book here, excuse me, um, Plenty Coups, Chief of the Crows. This was a dollar, and just a little bit, you know, I mean, it's in, the book itself, there's no bent pages, it's in great shape, but just a little bit of stain color over there, nothing bad. Um, I already have this book, but I figured that uh, maybe I could read this with my son, so whatever happens to what happens to it, if he's a little bit rough, I don't really care. But uh, this is a, a great book. Should be read in conjunction with Wooden Leg, who was a Cheyenne Indian. So, Plenty Coos, Chief of the Crows. Next on my list, let's see here. <clears throat> now, this I already had, but it was a dollar. And it was a, it's a nice book. The Cheyennes, Indians of the Great Plains by E. Adamson Hobel. And it's a little thin booklet. It's got lots of informative text. And I'm trying to find a picture here. So for a dollar, and it was like in great shape, I had to get it. Now, um, next on the list, I picked up Isaac Asimov, this is called The Far Ends of Time and Earth, contains two classic novels, Pebble in the Sky and The End of Eternity, which The End of Eternity I read, I think this last year, um, 2016 I read it, and then there's a short story collection from a book called Earth is Room Enough, so it's kind of a compilation of three things, two, two books and a short story compilation in here and it was in great shape and this was I think uh, one dollar or two dollars I remember I think it was I think it was 
two. I think it was two dollars, but that's definitely worth it. Next, another Isaac Asimov book. This would have also been two dollars. Um, Magic. The Final Fantasy Collection, Isaac Asimov. Looked interesting. It was like in excellent condition. Might have been red, but nothing wrong with it. So whoever read it had a light touch. Okay. Uh, next. This was, I think, 50 cents or a dollar. Playback, Raymond Chandler. I have a smaller paperback version of it. Uh, um, yeah, paperback. This, this I would consider a soft cover. It's a little bit bigger. Um, so I just thought, what the hell? I'll get it. Haven't read this one yet, but I I did just finish a um, a Raymond Chandler book, which I will get to in my next installment before the month is up. For the for the closing uh, installment of the month. Okay, next. This is interesting. This was um. It was fifty cents, I think. Tough guys and dangerous dames, and this is edited by Robert Weinberg and Stephen or Stefan. When me to say that last name, it's like a Polish-looking name, very long. Just forget it. And uh, Martin H. Greenberg. So three editors, and uh, it was in great shape. Lots of story, lots of short stories, and uh, will I ever have time to read all of these books? Oh, I can never die. Well, a guy can dream, can he? <clears throat> okay, American Detective hardcover. By the way, I put the um, nice clear covers on these broad art covers, and this book looked uh, brand new. American Detective. Tony Hillerman and Rosemary Herbert picked out the stories. Um, the Oxford Book of American Detective Stories, to be precise. Thick book. Lots of stories. And uh, what did I pay for this? I think it was a dollar. I think it was a dollar. If it wasn't a dollar, it was two dollars, but I think it was a dollar. And tail. Oh, there's two of these now. Let me show you. This was a pretty cool find, and these were a dollar each. So this is a Tales of Terror, Alfred Hitchcock, and Tales of Mystery, Alfred Hitchcock. Both hardcover. They're like new. They were a dollar each. This one has 58 short stories. And this one has 63 mystery stories, so 58 terror, terror stories, and uh, 63 short mystery stories. Excellent condition, a dollar each. A lot of times I see the paperbacks for Alfred Hitchcock books and I don't get them. Um, sometimes I feel bad leaving them behind, they're like really nice vintage books. But uh, I just, you know, I feel like I have so much stuff, I, I, don't, I don't get them. And, uh, but when I saw these, and, you know, lot, lots to read here, and just, it was $2 total price. You gotta be crazy not to get them. Okay, next, I got three books to go. I have this, um, book two times already, so this is my third, but it was in such great shape, and it was just a dollar. Artists and Illustrators of the Old West, 1850 to 1900, Robert Taft. This was a library discard, but there's no um, no no library uh, card in the back, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's got and it's got the nice maps on the end paper. Book is in great shape. Can't go wrong for a dollar, even if I had it. 
Although I have to admit that it is a little bit weird that I have to keep buying books like that. But maybe one day, maybe, and I doubt this will have happened, I will have a bookstore and sell a lot of my doubles. If I ever have a bookstore, I'd probably just keep all my doubles and I don't think I could part with them. It took me too much time finding everything. Okay, next. Now this book I really didn't need, but but it was, on, it was only a dollar. It's a National Geographic. I'm sure it had a dust jacket at one time. I don't have it. National Geographic on Indians of the Americas. A color illustrated record. Now the reason why I purchased it is there's some really nice art in it. It's like for instance this here is the, supposed to be the little bighorn village when Custa was attacking on June 25, 1876. So, just, you know, for a dollar, it's got some nice pictures in it, lots of illustrations. Let me see, I'll find another one for you. Um, give me a second, stop rushing me. Uh, something in color. So, there's lots of stuff in here, Photo, um, photos, um, lots of nice stuff. So, for a dollar, it's pretty good. Now, this was probably the most, um, this was, yeah, this was two dollars. And it's called The Art of the Golden West by William C. Ketchum, Jr. I have this book, but it was like, great condition, it was two dollars, and, uh, let me see here. Show inside a few pages. It's got text in here too, explanatory text at the artwork. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah. So here's about Charles Russell, and there's one of Russell's paintings. So. For two dollars, and what's really cool about this book, it's got the jacket. But when you take the jacket off, the actual book, which is hardcover, is also the same picture. So that's kind of cool. So we had a great time. Went out to eat at uh, Chicago Uno's. I don't know. I don't even know what they call themselves. Chicago Pizzeria Uno's Pizzeria. Doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about. So that was that was it for today. Pretty good. Um, I'm happy. Found some nice stuff. Some things I had, some I didn't, and uh, got some really good bargains. So next week um, I'll sh go over what books I've read during the month, what movies I watched, and um, I remember what what uh, movies I purchased. And any, any books I may have gotten in the interim, um, I'll add, of course. So that's it for this, this update. Take care. Well, it's December 1st, 2016, and this will be the final segment of my November video. Uh, this is also the ending of my 10th video. It's hard to believe that uh, 10 months have gone by since I started this project. After December and January, it'll be one year, and... Just can't believe it. Um, it's been, uh, I mean, no one watches the videos, but it's been fun for me just, you know, reviewing what I watch, what I purchased. Maybe one day my grandkids will watch, or great grandkids, I don't know. But anyway, this is just kind of a personal journal for me, so I'm having fun doing it. It's a little project. So I'm going to uh, show first what books I purchased the last few days. <clears throat> Uh, just a few here. Wilderness Passage by Forrest Blake. And by the way, I have a, a little bit of a cough, so I might pause once in a while to, just to get a little drink. Um, so, Wilderness uh, Passage by Forrest Blake. And this is the follow-up novel to Johnny Christmas, which I um, I think I showed in a previous uh, segment to this November video. <coughs> And uh, I'll probably read the two of these books this coming year, the year of the Western, 2017. And so that should be fun. Hopefully they're good books. So that's one. 
Then I purchased <clears throat> just today with One Sky Above Us by Mick Gidley. And this is a book about, I think it's like turn of the century photographs of Nez Perce Indians, um, Chief Joseph, Yellow Wolf, and uh, a lot of others. Um, it's pretty cool. Let me see here, I'll get a, some pictures for you. And there's, you know, text, excuse me, here we go. <clears throat> and, uh, Looks like some, lots of good reading. Here's some more pictures of families and kids. I really um, respect and love the Nez Perce Indians. Always had a, a very strong interest in them since reading Yellow Wolf, his own story. Um, at the War of Nez Perce War of 1877, it was written with the help of Lucullus McWhorter, a wonderful man. He should be more well known um, in, in, in the history of the Indian Wars. And Nez Perce, where Yellow, I mean, Yellow Wolf, he's, he's up next to my uh, computer. After reading that book, he just stayed with me. It was just an incredible book, and I recommend everybody read that book. I see you're all running for the book. Um, but the Nez Perce really have my respect. They, um, especially the ones, especially the ones that retained their native religion and did not convert to Christianity. Which was a big, uh, big part of that war. Not many historians mention it, but there was a religious element to that war. So, with one sky above us, life on an Indian reservation at the turn of the century. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna get a drink. Okay. So the next book um, that I purchased this week is the the Taming of the Canadian West by Frank Rasky, and this book was in like excellent condition. I think it was two or three dollars um, just outside on the racks, the store that I go to. And it's a, it's a popular history, so um, I'm not saying it's you know, going to be the most thorough book. Um, hopefully it's generally accurate and uh, it looks interesting. Lots of nice pictures and looks like good information, so hopefully. Cool cover. I think that's a painting by Paul Kane. Canadian artist. Yep, cover painting by Paul Kane. So, <clears throat> there you go. The last three purchases uh, for the month. And this Saturday, we're taking a trip, taking a trip, uh, book trip. So, to Connecticut, and hopefully, I'll come home with a bunch of books for a video on Saturday night. Um, now, what did I read this last month? <clears throat> okay. Um, first, uh, not, no particular order, just uh, what I, how I have them seated here in front of me. Um, I read An Apache Campaign in the Sierra Madre by John Bork. Um, he was a soldier in the 1870s and 1880s. I actually have the book, um, but I printed this out of the computer. <clears throat> I found a PDF online because I was like writing notes. I don't want to write it in the book. So I read, I printed out, read this, and... Uh, have notes all over the place, <clears throat> things of interest. Um, so, good Indian Wars book, very highly recommended. <clears throat> Next, I read, let's see here, okay, I'll do this one. Um, this might have been mentioned in a previous video because I had started it, but I finished it um, earlier in November. So, it's The Illusion of God's Presence by John C. Wathi. I had a hard time with this book. I thought it was a bit advanced for me. The last few chapters were better. The last couple of chapters in particular. Um, it's very interesting. I'm not... Uh, I'm, it was very scientific, I thought, a lot of it. And beyond you know my understanding what he was talking about all the time. I was able to follow along. I generally understood what, what was going on. <coughs> but... Um, a lot of times I found myself just reading just to read the words and try to get through it. But um, I do recommend it. Uh, you know, your reading level and interest might be more than mine. Um, I think I'm a smart reader, but this just, it was a bit hard for me. Um, again, the last two chapters I thought were the best. And uh, so, Illusion of God's Presence. I certainly 
I certainly did learn a lot from reading it, um, like all these kind of scientific studies that are done um, with babies and others throughout your life that, you know, they, they test you for all these different things, um, all these like strange things they figure out to test you. And, you know, like I say, it's, I, I can't really repeat what was in the book, but uh, it was interesting. And also, <clears throat> I do agree with the author's premise is that God is a, an illusion, the illusion of God's presence. I don't believe there is a God, especially the God of the Bible. <clears throat> um, and in fact, today I was just uh, in my head thinking, where else do you think, right? And uh, I, I had written this down, that God is a fictional character in a book, not even a very good book, and the character is terribly flawed. So to me, that's what God is. God is just you know, it's a character in a book, and there's been different gods, but uh, the God of the Bible, specifically, is is a character in a book. It's not a real person. It's not a real God. It's just a character, and so many people just don't seem to get that. And the character again is just terribly flawed. Not a not a great God. Um, and uh, I just don't, you know, it's so obviously not true, so obviously a myth. I, I don't understand how, I guess the mind can believe anything. I just don't know how people get, how, how they don't just see it for what it is. I mean, a lot of people do come around, but many people really do believe, um, or at least they say they do. I don't know. Not in their heads. I don't understand it. I guess the mind could be made to believe anything. Anything could become normal. Um, just about. But in the end, it's just a character in a book. That's all it is. And a lot of wishful thinking. Well, I don't know why I'd want to wish for that. It's... I mean, like if you're a Christian, for instance, you know, believe or go to hell. Who wants to live like that? <clears throat> but don't worry, you're not going to hell. There's no hell. Okay, uh, enough of that. The Lady in the Lake, Raymond Chandler. I enjoyed this book, but the plot was a bit convoluted, which is, I guess, typical for um, these kind of books. Um, I did enjoy it, though. Raymond Chandler. I feel smarter, you know, having read this book. Like, uh... You know, like I joined some kind of club. Um, is that accurate? I don't know. But just just like, you know, a lot of people from the past have read this book, and now I've read it, and I kind of like feel like, you know, I'm a little bit on the inside now. I understand uh, the charm of Raymond Chandler, so to speak. I did read a book of short stories of his, which I liked, and I've been watching some movies that are based on his stories. Interesting cover. I like to collect different ones if I see them in stores um, for a good price and good condition. I'll get different copies with different covers. So the lady in the lake. I do want to read more Raymond Chandler. I think he's he's good. I like some of the uh, you know wise cracks and it's just interesting. Um, but next time I, if I feel like it, I might just you know take notes as I'm reading it so I can keep track of who's who and so forth. Because you can lose track in a lot of characters in his books. And uh, people change names. And I'm going to pause a second and get a drink. Next book that I read is A Far Sunset by Edmund Cooper. And I picked this up in Maine in August when we took a trip um, at Free in Freeport, Maine at a place called Two Brothers. Pretty cool bookstore. Um, lots of vintage books to look at. <clears throat> and this was an interesting book. Um... I'm not going to go into what it was about, but aliens, some a man from Earth, um, he's on a distant planet, and uh, it was okay. It didn't blow me away, but it was good. <clears throat> Next, I read Isaac Asimov, Nightfall, and Other Stories. Now, to tell you the truth, the, the story itself, Nightfall, which is supposed to be a famous story of his, <clears throat> I wasn't crazy about it. And the reason is that, I'll, t I'll tell you what the story was about. It's basically going to be some kind of eclipse where there's like no light. 
and I think it's for an extended amount of time. I read it a few weeks ago, I don't remember all the details. And they're wondering what's going to happen when they have no light, that they're going to go crazy. But it didn't make any sense because you could turn on your lights, you can turn on spotlights, there's you know, uh, <clears throat> man-made light, artificially created light, so you don't have to be in the dark. So I kind of didn't understand what the big deal was that it was going to be dark because they could have manufactured their own light. They wouldn't have been in the dark. So why were they so freaking out? I don't understand. Did I miss something? Um, <clears throat> this book had a lot of short stories in it. Generally amusing. Asimov was a good writer. Even Nightfall was a, you know, it's well written. I just thought there was a plot hole. Um, but I, I did like a bunch of stories in here. <clears throat> so... Another one. <clears throat> now, this book I just finished today. It took me about a week to read. Um, <clears throat> I knew coming into it that uh, it was not going to be that uh, accurate, at least at least the background of the main uh, character in the book. Well, I shouldn't say character because it's an autobiography, but then again, he is a character because he just lies. Um, or, or had a problem where he actually began to think that his lies were the truth or... He was hallucinating. I don't know. But uh, the, I should show you the book, right? Iron Eyes, My Life as a Hollywood Indian by Iron Eyes Cody as told to Colin Perry. Of course, Iron Eyes Cody is the... <clears throat> I should, shouldn't say Indian, but the Indian scene in the commercial crying about the pollution. Problem is, he's not an, in, an Indian. He made it up. He was a Sicilian-American born in Louisiana in the early 1900s. <clears throat> and he created a whole persona for himself that he was Native American and basically the book is just there's, it's Hollywood stories um, and details about his life except uh, he makes up his whole, whole history for himself that isn't true he's a very good storyteller I mean the book really does read well and there's great stories in Errol Flynn, Gary Cooper <clears throat> um, others and uh, you know, John Wayne, <coughs> and some others, and he's got some great stories, but you don't know the truth of these stories. I mean, they might be based partially on truth, and then he made up the rest. He he included him. Uh, uh, Tim McCoy, uh, cowboy, is in here, um, and it's hard to tell really. Um, some of the some of the stories you can actually trace and find that he just lied. Other ones, there might be some glimmer of truth, maybe he was involved, maybe he wasn't, it's hard to tell. I mean, he, he even, ha he, he talks about being married to somebody that he was married to, but it, he puts the marriage earlier than it took place inside the book, and then he makes the girl, the, the daughter that the woman had, that his wife had, with a previous husband, he talks about it, that, that, that it was his daughter, but it wasn't his daughter. <clears throat> and um, she dies, uh, by the way, then he had two sons that he adopted, but he talks about them that his wife was pregnant with his sons. Like she gave birth to his sons, but she didn't. They were adopted. So he he just he was such a bullshitter. I I, I don't know if he became to came to believe the lies, or what. But he um, maybe he had some kind of mental problem. He, he told the story when he, he died in his like early nineties. So maybe you know at the age he was at when he told the story. He had some kind of you know mental problem issue, and he just didn't remember things correctly. Did his best. I mean, I don't know. Was he lying purposely? Did he know? It's hard to believe that he that he didn't know. So, I ha so I'm going to say that he became to believe his lies, and he got really good at it. But I did enjoy reading it. <clears throat> um, you know, there are some good stories in here. I don't know. Just you just don't know how truthful they are. Um, so, and it's too bad because he, he, the fact also that he doesn't tell, it, it came out, um, I think before he died, and this book was already out, that he wasn't an Indian, but he denied it, um, said that he was. So, it's kind of a shame because he, he, if he had told the real story, his real story, that would have been, you know, made in an historical document in, that people can use, whereas now it's just like an oddity. So... <clears throat> it is what it is.
Okay, now to movies that we wa that I watched this month. Um, and, and my family, we have Friday night at the movies, so some of these movies we watch together. So, for instance, we watched Logan's Run Together. This is an awesome movie. I watched this when I was a kid. It always stuck with me. I haven't watched it in a long time. So I watched it with my son. <clears throat> Why do I feel like I talked about this already in a previous video? I did watch it this last month. Did I talk about it in a previous segment? I don't remember. If I did, I'm sorry. I, I don't remember what was in the previous segments. But uh, Logan's Run. Good movie. <clears throat> The Glass Key. I have this odd feeling that I did some of these. Sorry if I did. Here we go again, that's all. Some of them should will be new, because I watched them in the last few days. So this is a great movie, The Glass Key, Alan Ladd, Veronica Lake. <clears throat> I really like Veronica Lake. <clears throat> uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's. I had no idea what this movie was going to be about, and it was good. I thought it was you know, going to be like some kind of girly movie, and I wouldn't like it. But I did. It was a good movie. I wouldn't call it a girly movie. It was uh, very entertaining. Very good. Ball of Fire with Gary Cooper and Barbara Stanwyck. <clears throat> I was not crazy about this movie. It was okay. I just... I wasn't crazy about it. And I'm going to pause for a second and get a drink. Okay, next movie. Sabrina with Humphrey Bogart and Audrey Hepburn and William Holden. Very good movie. I liked it a lot. Just watched this the other day. <clears throat> Sullivan's Travels with Joel McCrea and Veronica Lake. And this was a very good movie. The In-Laws. This was a Friday Night at the Movies selection. This is a great movie with... Um, why am I blank? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm like told you, Peter Falk and Alan Arkin. I just couldn't think of it. <clears throat> so, um, very funny movie. Recommended. Black Angel. I had watched this actually on YouTube a few months ago, and I uh, just purchased it. This is a, a pretty good movie. <clears throat> Dan Duryea, Peter Laurie, June Vincent. I did look up Dan Duryea on the uh, computer today and was a little bit disappointed. I had seen some article. He, he you know, uh, religious guy, um, thinks God intervened in his life. Um, you know, I'm a little bit forgiving of people who did that in the past because they didn't really, it, the t time he grew up, um, early 1900s, <clears throat> he didn't have the science available to us. Religion was still, I think, a big deal. Um, if a lot of these people were alive today, um, either had a different upbringing or, or, or didn't, it's just the same upbringing, but we're more open to scientific research, um, and where that leads, you know, might not believe, but, uh, it, it is, but he was a, he was a great act. I really enjoy watching him. I, I'm not holding it against him. I'm just saying I'm disappointed on a personal level. Um, but Good movie, and he was a very good actor. I enjoy enjoy watching him. <clears throat> okay, um, our man Flint with James Coburn, you know, goofy spy movie, but it was it was good. Now this <clears throat> has two movies on. I have not watched Troy yet, but I did watch Gladiator, and Gladiator is an awesome movie. Um, I'm not talking about it. It's how historically accurate it is. Don't know. I'm sure it's a movie. Uh, what I mean is, of course it's a movie. What I mean is, being a movie, I'm sure it's not completely accurate. You know, it's a movie, but um, it was really it's an awesome spectacle to watch. It was very good. <clears throat> I have to watch Troy. Maybe this coming month I'll watch it. Then um, we watched, uh, for Friday Night at the Movies, we watched Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Abner Costello to Meet the Invisible Man, um, the last two movies that were on this disc. <clears throat> also, I watched, excuse me a second, um, on YouTube, 
I watched, and then there were nine in Agatha Christie um, movie, and The Tall T, a Western with Gary Cooper, which was pretty good. And also in that movie was... The reason why I wanted to mention him is, is uh, was it Richard Boone? I think it was Richard Boone. Yeah, because I think I read that he was an atheist. Um, or at least was not religious. Um, so that was kind of impressive to me. Okay, so that's it for the month of November 2016. Um, that's it. I did improve the lighting. I moved where I used to sit from my older video, so the lighting should be a lot better. Um, that's about it. See you at the end of December. Bye.